Lab 31, welcome to example four. We're going to find some traits and graph yet another ellipse. But I made this equation look pretty funky, very intentionally. I wanted to mess with us. So you see here that I've, I've now got a square root hanging out here, right? I've got y over three is equal to negative square root one minus x squared over four. So let's manipulate this and get this into standard form. And then I'm going to talk about what this negative is doing in terms of our graph. So if I want to manipulate this a little bit to get it to look more like something we've seen before, let's square both sides. All right, so I want to square both sides of this graph, or excuse me, of this equation. If I square both sides of this, I'm looking at y squared over nine being equal to one minus x squared over four. All right, and I say that because you can distribute this power or this exponent to the y and the three and when you square root, excuse me, when you square a square root, those two are going to go away, right? They're inverse operations of each other, and negative 1 squared is positive 1. Now, if I move the x squared over, I'm looking at x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 is equal to 1, right? So all of a sudden, I do see my ellipse in standard form. I see a squared here at 9, b squared is 4, so I can see here a is 3, b is 2, all right? And if c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared, c will be equal to the square root of 5 because 9 minus 4 is 5 and c squared would be equal to 5, so c is the square root of 5, all right? Now, before we move on, I want you to imagine this ellipse, okay? And I want us to talk about how this equation was initially written, all right? When you see an ellipse, or at least the version of an ellipse, where I've solved, or almost solved for one of the variables, like I've got y isolated, or almost isolated here on the left side of the equation, you see that I've, I've solved for y by square rooting both sides, right? If I reworked this and started to solve for y, I can move the x squared over four back over and then square root both sides. But when you square root both sides, there would technically be a plus or minus here, and I've only opted for the minus part. All right, which means when you see an equation like this, I only am asking you for half of the ellipse. I either want the bottom half of the ellipse or maybe the left half of the ellipse, just depending on whether the major axis is horizontal or vertical. So, so go with me. All right, I'm gonna start to graph this and we'll see, hopefully it'll, it'll gel a little bit more what I'm trying to say here, all right? So I'm going to go 10 and 10. I can see that the center is still the origin. All right, so I'm going to go 0, 0. All right, I see that A is 3. 3 goes with the Y, so I'm going to go up and down 3. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I see B is 2, so I'm going to go left and right 2. But now, before I draw this whole thing in, I really want to take this into consideration. All right, so I can see that I have a vertical ellipse because my major axis would be vertical. When you see the equation of ellipse in this form, when I've solved for y, meaning I've square rooted both sides of this equation, right? I've, I've moved the x squared over four over and I square rooted both sides. But since you don't see the plus or minus, again, I'm gonna stress this, I'm only asking you to graph half of the ellipse. All right, so only asking to graph half of the ellipse. Now, because this would have been a vertical ellipse, I'm specifically here asking you to graph the bottom half of the ellipse. And I, I'm, I'm gonna reiterate why, because if we look at our original equation, if this was x squared over four plus y squared over nine equaling one, and I really did solve for y, We'll go backwards, right? I would have y squared over 9 is equal to 1 minus x squared over 4, and I could square root both sides. But if I square root both sides, I should have the plus or minus showing up because the plus would represent the top half of the ellipse and the minus would represent the bottom half of the ellipse. And since this is only showing the negative square root, I am only asking you for the negative, excuse me, the bottom half of the ellipse. So you want to be careful with that when these these equations are given to you in a little bit funkier looking form. All right, I'm gonna erase all of this because I don't technically need it. I just wanted you to see that if I was solving for y, the plus or minus should have been there. Since it's not, I'm only asking you 
for half of the ellipse. Okay. All right. So only asking you to grab half of the ellipse. Let me put specifically the bottom half. Okay, so i.e. the bottom half. If this had been a horizontal ellipse, I would have been, and you saw a negative sign, I would have been asking you to graph the left half. All right, so for vertices, let's take a look at our vertices. So our vertices, they need to be along the major axis, and that would have been horizontal, but I, I cut this top half off. So my only vertex, really, is 0, negative 3. I still have two co-vertices. I have one at 2, 0 and negative 2, 0. Okay. And technically, I don't have two foci because, again, I would, I'm supposed to have this top half of the ellipse, and my foci would be here and here, but I, I'm missing the top half. I only have the bottom half. Okay. So let me sketch in my bottom half. There we go. Now I know C is root 5. The square root of 5, let's see if we got that numerically. Let's see what the square root of 5 is equal to. It's about 2.2. So I'm going to go from my origin 2.2 units down. There's my foci. Now since I'm heading down, that's going to affect the y-coordinate of my foci, or I should say if I'm heading square root of 5 units down from my center, it'll change the y-coordinate to 0, negative root 5. Okay? And then we can go figure out the domain and range. So it looks like the leftmost point is negative 2, 0. The rightmost point is 2, 0. So it looks like my domain is negative 2 to 2. It looks like my range goes from a low of negative 3 to a high of 0. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. Let me move this up. And then let's go ahead and write in our domain, which is from negative 2 to 2. And then our range, which is from negative 3 to 0. OK. Now, if you wanted to plug this into your calculator, you could. You'd have to do a little bit more algebraic manipulation, and here's what I mean. Right now, we have y equaling negative square root of 1 minus x squared over 4. Oops, excuse me, y over 3. If you want to get this into your graphing calculator, you need to get y all by itself. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3, and that will get rid of the fractions, right? So ultimately, I have negative 3 root 1 minus x squared over 4. So let me go plug this into y1. And we should get something that looks like the lower half of our parabola. All right, so here we go. Negative 3 times the square root of 1 minus x squared over 4. I'll close that parentheses. All right, now I don't remember if my window was from a math or a stats problem last, so I'm going to hit zoom 6. All right, and there, there it is. That's the bottom half of my parabola, right? Now, I do want you to take note that if, if you were to zoom in, and maybe you have to zoom in on the video, you can kind of see there's a gap here, right? Your calculator doesn't graph all the way to that x-intercept of negative 2, 0, and it doesn't graph all the way to that x-intercept of positive 2, 0, or technically those co-vertices. And that's because our calculator has like two, three, maybe four pixels in it. It's not the greatest. It doesn't have the greatest, greatest graphics card. So this is just an example of where if we saw that on our calculator, I don't want you to give me like a floating half an ellipse. I want you to realize that, oh, the calculator is just struggling to graph the ellipse all the way to the x-axis. So make sure that you recognize that, hey, if I was going to just copy this graph from my calculator onto my paper, I need to extend and get the x-intercepts or really the co-vertices in there as well. If you want, if you want to add the top half in, this is how you can go graph an ellipse. You can make the positive square root of 1 minus x squared over 4 happen, right? You could plug that into y2 if you wanted. And now when I hit graph, you're going to see the top half come in. If you want to zoom in on that, it almost looks like a circle right now. Um, I can zoom in in a moment just so we get a better look at it. The reason it looks like a circle is just the way that your, your calculator is set up. Um, if you know your zoom 9 window, it's from negative 10 on the x-axis to positive 10, and this is negative 10 to 10 in the y's. But you can see here that the horizontal axis is just longer than the vertical axis, which is why this looks more like a circle than an ellipse. 
if we wanted to give it uh, a, a little bit more of a flare to, to make it look like, a, like an ellipse, we could cut this off. We could say just go from negative five to five here. All right, and that actually, that, that didn't really do a whole lot. <laughs> I was hoping it would do more. It actually now looks more like a horizontal ellipse rather than a vertical ellipse. So I had the opposite effect of what I wanted. Let me go clear this up. Let's just take this from negative four to four, and I'm gonna re-extend this negative 10 to 10. Is this doing what I want? That's doing a little bit better, but it's still not, you can see it's still struggling. It's struggling to, to connect those dots. So just make sure that you know that you would need to connect those dots. All right, so with that, Let's flip to the next couple of examples, and these are gonna be what I would refer to as backwards problems. And when I say backwards problems, instead of me giving you an equation, oops, an equation like this, and saying, hey, from this equation, can you give me some traits? I'm gonna now give you some traits and ask you to go backwards and get me the equation. All right, so that's what we're gonna practice in the next couple of examples. All right, I will see you in a bit. Thanks so much, bye.